Hi, this is Meka. Tina. Why are we here? Oh my God, Meka, I have some amazing new I want to share with you. Really? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I want to yes. know. And I want to share with you guys too, because I know you're not here. So we're going to make this video very, very special because today we know someone has something amazing and we want to share it to you and we want to share it to all the ladies out there. Hey, is that? That's honey. Oh my gosh. Hi, honey. Hey, how are you? Good, good. good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, well, good to see you. Well, Mika, this is the news that I want to tell you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, congrats, honey. Thank you. I heard the news from Lena. Yes, yeah, I'm super excited. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I wanted to know a little bit more. I mean, how about you tell uh, a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, giving me this incredible interview today. I'm super excited. So, hello, guys. Again, my name is Honey. And um, was it growing up, you know, I actually always saw my parents worked all the time and um, I realized that as time went on with my dad working so hard it kind of took a toll on his health and so then before starting this journey I told myself that I was never going to be that busy mom you know I me mean? I was I was going to give time to my kid and everything but as you know as I got older I realized that time just goes by just like that and so then next thing I know is seven years later, you know, I am overly obese. You know, I was actually diagnosed with high blood pressure, diabetes, low iron, and also PCOS. So that itself, you know, was, was a awakening call for me because I was afraid of not waking up the next morning, not having the time with my daughter. And on, also on top of that, just being able just to build that memory that I never had with my with my parents itself. And so then, yeah, so um, I was um, introduced to this incredible platform that just completely changed my life. You know, I was able to lose the weight, you know, I was able to uh, leave my job and be able just to have and create more time with my daughter. And then again, you know, she loves me being at home now. So all we do is watch movies all day. So yeah. <laughs> well, honey, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your dad, but I mean, uh, can you share a little bit about, you know, at that time, how it felt to lose someone? Because I also know how it feels like. Yeah, um, was it, I was 19 when I lost my father. Um, I remember before my father leaving us, he had bags and bags of like medic medication, just all different kinds of medicines. And like, I didn't even know what to give my dad, you know, what my dad, uh, so by the time I was 19, I remember it was actually the day before his birthday. He actually woke me up to massage him. He said that his body hurted. And um, him and my dad actually just got back from the casino because that was his, you know, his, his 58th birthday. So they were really excited. Uh, but then when they got back, I remember my mom waking me up and I was massaging him so he doesn't have any body ache. And he kept saying that, you know, his arm was hurting, his arm was hurting, his side, his back. And, you know, me being so young and 19, I didn't know anything. Yeah, and so then the next morning, I then found out that he actually had a, had a heart attack, you know. So that itself was an awakening for me to really see, like, my father struggle, my mom, you know, figure out what she has to do next because, you know, there was eight of us total. You know, so we came, we were, we're from a really large family, so I didn't, so, you know, but my mom was a soldier, so yeah, she really held it all together for us. Wow, so strong. Yeah. Honey, I mean, how, how did that incident impact you with your weight and everything after that? Yeah, well, uh, well, when my dad passed away, I had a, you know, I, I had an opportunity to really go to school or go to work. And I knew that because my mom was the only bread maker, you know, the only breadwinner in, in the family. Uh, and there was so many of us that were really, really, I, I'm, we're not responsible. Um, I decided I was going to work instead. So I put my life on hold so I can just start working because I knew experience was so, so important. So I ended up just working at a very young age to help my mom pay bills. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of where, and then growing up, I, it just kind of took a toll on me. You know, I decided I want to start a family. You know, me being a single mom at a very young age on one income was really hard. You know, and so then I told myself that I was not going to be like that because I saw my parents, they worked all the time. And I wanted to give my time, my daughter, everything she, everything I've never had growing up. You know, the memories, the building. I wanted to attend all of her games and, her, and all of her activities. You know, because I remember never seeing my parents there for that. So, so honey, you mentioned that you were overweight with everything. 
how did that take a toll on you and what did you decide to do about it? Yeah, so after I had my daughter in 2013, I actually struggled with weight loss for seven years. So I did nothing but gain, gain, gain because all I did was sit at a desk all day. Yeah, and so then by the time I was 30, I was actually diagnosed with high blood pressure, diabetes, low iron, uh, PCOS as well, you know, and I think all of that just really woke me up because uh, one day I actually lost my brother and he just didn't wake up the next day because of his own health. You know, and I was afraid of not waking up the next day for my daughter. I was afraid of, you know, going through the same path as my, as my brother and my dad. So, so honey, you mentioned that you were overweight mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. So, how much did you weigh before? Well, um, I weighed it fluctuated between uh, two thirty-five and four. I was almost four. I'm sorry, two forty-five. Yeah, and um, I've tried everything. Um, I've done everything, guys, compared to keto, intermittent fasting. I've done it all. All the all the diet pills, Asian pills, Hmong Village pills, I've done it all. And um, that's when it hit me hard because I realized that I wanted, I was considered about doing surgery. And that's when I asked myself like, well, what am I doing? Why am I even thinking this? And then I realized that I had a depression because I hated the way I looked. I hated the way how I felt. It, it, it was deterring me from the inside, not even realizing it, yeah. Um, so since you mentioned about trying different things and nothing really worked for you, why did you decide on the uh, to go on the eight week challenge? Well, um, well, it's kind of like I knew I had to do something. Um, if I didn't do something, then I was then that was gonna be the end of it. But because I. I never want to judge another program because of my previous experience before. So yeah, so when I saw my friend, she was actually losing weight and I was like, well, what is it? You know, and when I, uh, when she was explaining it to me, it just made sense. You know, I just sat there and I go, hmm, I don't know why no one's ever told me about this stuff before because growing up, we didn't know anything about nutrition or anything at all. And so yeah, so I just jumped on it without no hesitation because it sounded right, it made sense, and I mean, it's all, it is, it is probably one of the best system and best investment I've ever made to myself because I asked myself like how much is my one life worth you know what I mean like why why am I not doing all the necessary things before going under surgery so yeah, yeah. so you mentioned how amazing the system is so what kind of results did you get well uh, I did the eight weeks challenge first you know and in the eight weeks I was actually able to lose about 25 pounds in eight weeks and then of course I continued on because I knew that wasn't the ending for me. So by the time I hit my one year mark, I was actually down about 82 pounds. And then at 16 months, I actually lost 100 pounds. So that was my true, true goal itself. So wow, wow. so you lost 100 pounds. And I hear you are on the uh, you were on the 100 pound club. Yes. And so with that, I mean, I hear that you get free products for the rest of your life. Yes, yep, and that is true. And and again, that's the one thing I loved about our industry, especially with the companies that, you know, they, they want to give us for our achievements, you know, and they want to acknowledge us and free products forever. Like, dude, that is like incredible because they want you to be able to maintain, you know, they want you to be able to take care of yourself. It's not about just losing it and gaining it, you know, it's about losing it, maintaining it, and being healthier for the new you, the better you. So, so honey, you mentioned earlier about um, having PCOS, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what that is, but. Um, I mean, right now you are pregnant. Yeah. So uh, tell a little bit about. I mean, what is that? Yeah. Uh, well, PCOS is basically um, was it is very common now in days. I realize uh, a lot of people they have a hard time with fertility. And uh, when I was diagnosed with PCOS, I didn't even think anything of it because I, I wasn't educated about it either. I I got diagnosed with PCOS after I had my daughter. Yeah, and so then um, it's basically saying that my eggs are not fertilizing, I'm not getting fresh ones in there, and that it would be hard for me to have kids. When, when my OBGYN diagnosed me, uh, they said that I have PCOS, that I would not be able to have kids for a while, you know, unless I was to correct something, but they weren't able to give me anything but medication, and I don't like medication itself, so. So with PCOS, if it's hard to have a baby, and you're pregnant, how, how, I mean, how did that happen? Yeah, well, you know, uh, believe it or not, uh, I think that because um, I just took care of myself, you know, with our system. I just followed the system and, you know, because I was able to cleanse everything and take and correct myself from the inside, it allowed for me to bring my body back to normal, just being the healthy version of me. And then, of course, I think that itself also corrected my PCOS, not even knowing that that's what it does. 
you know and so yeah so it's really a blessing in disguise because you know i've always wanted to give my daughter a sibling and you know i'm pretty sure she's content now but she loves the idea of having a, a sibling now even though she's nine but yeah she's really excited and you know I, I think that's the most important part is the fact that you know we were blessed to be able to bring another child into this world of ours so ah, i'm sure she does so honey i mean thank you for all the information but you know i have uh, a lot of clients who's also struggling and with pcos what would you like to say to the women out there who are struggling? Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much for having me on. Um, again, ladies, um, what is it? Definitely, PCOS is a serious thing. If you guys don't know about it, I mean, definitely look it up and do your research. Uh, it is so important, guys, that you guys take care of yourself because, believe it or not, if you want kids now or later or maybe a long, long, long time in the future, don't wait until your body's deteriorating for you to take care of yourself. You know, I do highly suggest that you always take care of yourself first so that when the time is comes and you're ready for it, then you're prepared. And so then, yeah, so uh, I'm very grateful for being on this system because it's just completely changed me, transformed me from the end inside out I was not only able to take care of my chronic health but also be able to be blessed with a oh, child honey, as well. I'm excited for you I'm excited for baby uh, you gotta let us know when you have the gender reveal yeah absolutely I'll let you guys know and then again you know uh, when it's time you'll know but uh, soon here very very soon but yes, uh, thank you so much, you know, for giving me this time, you know, giving your time itself. The same thing with Miss Lena. Uh, thank you guys for being here for me from day one. You know, before I joined the eight week challenge, and you guys have really just stuck by me. And I mean, just the system itself, the incredible support system in in here is truly incredible. And I never could ask for any better uh, any better mentors because you know, in the beginning we were all just strangers. And you know, not only do we we're strangers, but now we're family. And you know, and that's what I love about this. So thank you. Well, everyone, I mean, you just heard Honey's amazing story, how inspirational and life-changing it is. And, you know, you heard her. Don't give up because, you know, whatever you're going through, I'm sure deep down inside you're looking for something. But, I mean, Honey, I mean, can they reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. They can reach out to any of us, you know. Um, and, yeah, it is uh, truly incredible. So, yeah, I mean, definitely share this with someone that you know is having this issue. Otherwise, you know, just also take them as well. You never know who might be listening. I always have a motto. It says, save one life one day at a time. So that's what I love to so do. thank you, God, you know, for giving me this chance to be able to have a second chance again. I'll be able to have, uh, give, uh, have this child as well. And also, you know, I do believe that God brought me here not to just not for myself but also to help others around me and yeah that's what i'm all here to do so thank you so much miss Mika, for your time thank you